Welcome to the Chemistry, Biology and Math Revision Hub. Today we're doing the Pearson Ed Excel International A Level Biology Unit 6 for June 2022. This is the part 1 video. I'll make the part 2 video and put a link below the description box. Let's begin with question 1. Question 1 says the photograph shows a zebrafish, Danio radio. Zebrafish live in fresh water through, throughout South Asia. So this is the zebrafish and they've given you the magnification. So they say, zebrafish are social animals. They can be kept in large numbers in tanks in the laboratory. A scientist investigated the presence of zebrafish for different colored areas of a tea, uh, of a tea maze filled with water. The diagram shows the tea maze used in the investigation. So we see they will start here and then there is a tea maze. They can choose to go the other side or this side. So this is the red area and that is the green area. It depends. So if we have a, maybe at the beginning 50 zebrafish, we can assume that there'll be 25 here and 25 here. If you're thinking that they're going to choose uh, halfway, some of the half of them go the other side and half of them go this side if there is nothing they're going to prefer. So let's move on. Here they say a group of 72 zebrafish were used in this investigation. These fish were raised from eggs of zebrafish living in a river and each fish was placed at the start of the tea maze and the color areas of the fish swam to were recorded. The results were shown in the table. So we see the number of, of fish preferring green were 44 and those preferring red were 28. So out of the 72, 44 went to the green area and 28 went to the red area. So they say each fish was returned to the source that the eggs came from. So just one reason why the scientist thought it was acceptable to carry out this investigation. The investigation using the fish was carried out because there is no pain that was inflicted on the zebra fish. So no pain was inflicted, it was very okay, and there was no ethical concern. Then the next part, they say the scientist made a prediction. There is no difference between the observed and expected color preference of zebra fish. Using the formula, calculate the value of the chi squared. Chi squared. So this is chi squared, and that is a summation of observed minus x expected squared divide by the expected. So I say there is 72, there are 72 fish in total. So the expected should be about 36 to go on to each. So for green, I was trying to calculate this value for green. It was uh, the observed, which is 44 minus the expected 36 divided by the expected 36. I squared that part above that the numerator was squared and I got that. Then for red also 28 minus 36 divided by 36 gave me the same value. So I had to add everything because remember chi squared is the summation of that and that. So when I added them together, I got 3.5556, which I rounded off to 3.56. And therefore, this is supposed to be my answer. Moving on. So they said the critical value for chi squared was 3.84. Give a conclusion that could be made from this investigation. Remember, my calculated value is down here, which is 3.56. You can see that. And if this is like this, it means the critical value is higher than the calculated value. So they say give a reason that could be made, a conclusion that could be made from this investigation. I said the calculated value or the calculated chi squared value, which is 3.56, is less than the critical value, which is 3.84. So here the null hypothesis should be accepted. That is what we can see. The next they say state one biotic, one abiotic variable that could affect the results of this investigation. Abiotic is like non-living variable, so it could be water, it could be temperature, it could be pH or light intensity, whichever you choose. It was just one mark required. And then they're going to say describe how this abiotic variable could be controlled and the effect and uh, the effect it could have on the results if it's not controlled. I chose the variable of temperature, and how could we control it? using thermostatically controlled water bath or a water heater. So if we heat the temperature of the water so that it's maintained, then the results are not going to be affected. Then next they say describe the effects it could have on the results if it's not controlled. So if the temperature was not controlled, the results will not be valid because temperature changes uh, affect how enzymes or enzymes are going to perform. Remember, these are enzymatically controlled processes and therefore, if uh, the temperature is changed, it means there is going to be an effect on how these enzymes work and therefore how this process is going to be carried out. 
Remember that swimming requires energy from respiration and respiration is carried out because there are enzymes that are working in the, in the organism. If the temperature is varied, respiration is going to be affected and the amount of energy generated is going to be affected. Therefore, the process of swimming is also going to be affected in that manner. The next, they say suggest why the scientists use each zebra fish only once. I say to prevent the zebra fish from being habituated. Habituated is when they, they become accustomed to the situation and then they will not have significant change or they will not, the results will be basically, uh, they will be misleading. They will not be as we, we they, will not, they will kind of be as if these organisms have um, accustomed to the situation. So the response from them will not be as they would be if it was the first time. So habituation would cause some problems to the results and they will not be as expected. This brings us to the end of question one. Let's go to question two. Question two, the photograph shows kiwi fruit and guava fruits from two different parts of the world. So this is a kiwi and that is a guava. So they say these fruits contain vitamin C. A student investigated the vitamin C content present in each type of fruit. Describe an experiment to measure the vitamin C content of each type of fruit. To measure vitamin C, we need the CPIP solution. So I said, you need to begin, by the way, by observing or by telling the examiner which one is the dependent variable. So since we are using the DCPIP solution and the vitamin C is present in the fruit juice, I say the dependent variable is the volume of the fruit juice needed to decolorize a specific volume of DCPIP solution. So here we need to extract the fruit juice by crushing or squashing the fruit using a motor and a peso. This process here is squashing to produce the juice out of the fruit. And then... We will take a specific uh, volume of the CPIP solution, maybe in a test tube like that. You put the CPIP and then other test tubes, of course, the CPIP. Let's assume it's going to be 5 centimeters. I'm just using as an example 5 centimeters. Then you will add the fruit juice to each and then see what volume of fruit juice is going to lead to a color change within the CPIP solution. That will be the volume you take. So moving on, I said... We have to use a constant volume. Let me take this back. Uh, you use, a, use a constant volume of the DCPIP solution. Can I first remove that? Okay. So use a constant volume of the DCPIP solution. Like I said, example, 5 centimeters, 5 centimeters for all the experiments because you want everything to be the same. And then to the DCPIP solution, add the fruit extract until it becomes decolorized. Remember, it's originally going to be a blue color and then that blue color will disappear, then we can know that the volume of the first solution we have added was sufficient enough to decolorize the DCPIP solution. And then you will recall the volume of the fruit juice required to change the color of DCPIP. So the concentration of the vitamin C in the fruit juice is equal to, this is the formula for calculating the concentration. I don't know if some of you this, know this formula. Let me use a green color to show you. Uh, concentration 1 times volume 1 is equal to concentration 2 times volume 2. Uh, this is where the number of moles are equal. So in this case, if you're trying to find the concentration 1, it's equal to concentration 2 times volume 2 divided by number of, uh, divided by um, concentration divided by volume 1. So in this case, you could use, this is kind of similar to that. So here in this case, we can see this is the concentration 2, and then we have the volume 2 and the volume 1. We can be able to find the second concentration using this same formula. I think I can write it for you here. Concentration 2 times volume 2 divided by volume 1. Or you could say if you're looking for concentration 2, it will be concentration 1 times volume uh, times volume 1 divided by volume 2. These two can give you the answer you're looking for. And then in the end, I say repeat the experiment and calculate the mean. Please remember you have to tell the examiner how to calculate this concentration of vitamin C in the fruit juice because that was your intention initially. So moving on, they say the student found the Vitamin C content of the fruit to be, fruit to be that, so for the kiwi, is 92.7 milligrams per 100 grams, and the guava is 223.3 milligrams uh, per 100 grams. They want you to calculate the percentage difference in the vitamin C content of the guava fruit compared with the kiwi and give your answer to three significant figures. Remember they said compared to the kiwi, so the kiwi is going to be our reference, so the difference should be 223.3 minus 92.7, divide by 92.7 you're comparing with kiwi so that's going to be the denominator and then multiply everything by 100 i get 140.88 rounding it off it becomes 141 which is going to be 141 percent 
So here they say, vitamin C is needed in the production of factors involved in the formation of blood clot, of a blood clot. Describe how a blood clot is formed. During the formation of a blood clot, thromboplastin is released. I hope you guys remember inside the platelets, that's where we're going to have the thromboplastin. It's going to be inside the platelets. When there is damage to the skin and these platelets come into contact with some of the proteins within the surface of the skin, it leads to the bursting and the release of thromboplastin. When this thromboplastin is released, it causes the conversion of prothrombin into thrombin. Now, prothrombin is inactive, but thrombin is active. The thrombin will then, this is an enzyme, it's going to cause the conversion of fibrinogen into fibrin. Fibrin is insoluble, and this fibrin causes a mesh-like structure that is going to trap blood cells, as well as some of these platelet fragments, causing formation of a clot around the wound. And this is going to seal off a wound from infection, as well as other, other microorganisms that would come in, some of which would be pathogenic, as well as stopping excess loss of blood to occur. So this brings us to the end of question two, as well as to the end of the part one video of this paper. Please do not forget to subscribe. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.